this video we're going to cover the production tips side of things, how to make making videos as easy as possible because it can be really quite time consuming, surprisingly so. The first tip is get people to help you if you can. Trying to do something like this on your own is hard work. We have a whole team of people that watch the videos and make notes. That being said, just having someone time stamping when something of interest happens isn't enough. Ideally you want someone to give you a summary of the meeting and whether it's worth covering in the first place as well as the timestamps. If you just get the timestamps with so and so said this and you don't get the full context of the meeting, you don't know whether the so and so said this bit, how relevant that is and then I've ended up watching most of the video myself which kind of defeats the object. So whenever possible get somebody to summarise as well as do timestamps if it's a video you haven't watched yourself and that will certainly cut down the workload. Now I'm still experimenting with the videos, I don't honestly know what the perfect balance is. Sometimes I will do a summary because sometimes things just go on and on and on and on. It's impossible to get clips together, it's so time consuming to try and get the essence across. It's quicker and easier just to summarise that. Now if you're not comfortable doing it to camera, you can just do a voiceover to your computer which I'll show you in a moment. So you can freeze frame the video or have a picture of a background or something and then just talk over it with your summary. There's also some brilliant software that someone uh, told me about called CapCut. It's free. They do have a paid version but you can do a great deal on the free version and you can do all sorts of fun and games with that. So I'll show you how I use it. I'm not going to give you a full demonstration because there are good video tutorials on YouTube that you can watch for that. The hardest part of this is knowing which clips to include and that yeah, you'll get a sixth sense for it. Bits will just leap out at you when you're watching the meetings or the person that made the notes for you will say, this has to go in. You'll, you'll just get a sense of what needs to go in. Uh, I know that's not terribly helpful. To begin with, the videos will probably be about half an hour long, but try and keep them to about 15 minutes. And what I tend to do is if I've covered one topic like finances in depth in, a vi in another video, I try not to do it too much in the next video just to mix it up a bit and keep it interesting. But one thing that is very important which I forgot to say in my last video on this subject is do highlight and showcase the good things the counsellors are doing as much as the things that just leave you rolling your eyes or tearing your hair out because you know the idea is to encourage them to do things that are really helping the public so you know make sure that it's as balanced as you can can get it. Praise where praise is due. Because as you'll soon see, it is hard work being a counsellor and they get far more grief than they do praise. So do give them some guidance on when they're doing well. The simplest way to do the video is to say nothing and just do clips from what's been happening or maybe with a voiceover summary when it's tricky, to, it's going to take you too long to do snippets. So people often ask me what camera I use and want to know all the technical stuff. It's an old iPhone and frankly the older the better because the older it is the worse the camera is and the younger you will look. I don't want high definition at this time in the morning or actually any time of day being as close to the camera. So yes having a slightly older camera is advantageous for vanity if nothing else. This camera almost makes me look like a newborn in comparison to the actual truth of the matter. Anyway moving on. So first off I will show you my setup of how I am got the studio stroke office set up and then we'll look at the software. So super simple setup and a super simple microphone. I've actually got a really expensive Rode podcasting microphone because I occasionally do voiceovers um, and a semi-professional studio but I bought this one just for £15 off of eBay because I wanted this casing to hold the Rode microphone when I can't be bothered to set up the full studio just for an average recording but this cheap and cheerful microphone is actually so good it's easier to use than the road because it doesn't pick up every last sound but it's wonderful for when you're doing a voiceover to something you're recording so if you're doing a screen recording which I'm going to be doing in a moment in fact I might as well show you while I'm doing it so if you're playing a video you want to use the record computer audio setting but if you're going to record a voiceover on something that you're doing you don't want to use your internal mic, that's when you want to pick this one and then take 
that one off otherwise you end up with every keystroke that you make and then i'm about to walk you through how to use CapCut. so now the screen is recording everything that i do so the main thing I use the screen recording software for is the council meetings themselves. Yes, you can get software like Softorino Converter, etc. that will strip out the YouTube videos directly. But I find those, they're usually sort of, they can be anywhere between one to four hours long. And if you're going to put it in CapCut to do the transcript, that just that takes up a lot of space in your free account so I just use the timestamp so I will set it recording put it on full screen I also tend to have the playback speed with our counsellors a little bit faster some of them do speak quickly so I'll switch it off but most of them don't so I'll do that and I also set the quality as high as I'm able to and then I'll play a whatever clips I want. Then when I do the to camera parts I just use the gimbal here. Um, when it's switched on I put the light on as well because it's good to have your face fully illuminated from the front um, then you don't get any awkward shadows cast so it's a very simple setup. You don't need to spend a lot of money on it. Microphones are important as long as you have a microphone plenty of other YouTubers that can advise you on which microphones etc to get but I've got the one that fits in my phone, which is this one. I can't remember where I got it from or how much it was, but I don't think I spent much. So there you go. That's the very simple setup. Um, Manky dog chewed tennis ball is an optional extra. Now I've created a playlist that shows videos where I show you more in depth how to edit, but there's loads on YouTube. So just find whatever equipment you've got, there's bound to be tutorials on how to use it effectively that will be better than the ones I've done. So it's a matter of experimenting. It's really not, difficult what it is is time consuming so the more help you can get with it the better there's a little trick with CapCut that will save you absolutely hours of work so this is my top time saving tip you get your footage into CapCut and then you get CapCut to transcribe it now you can only do this as far as I'm aware on the online version. Um, I haven't tried it on an iPad or iPhone yet, but certainly the transcribe option isn't available in the downloadable Mac version at the moment, which is a shame. So click on transcript and then choose the language and then transcribe. It can take a while for the longer videos, as you'd expect. Okay, so what you can do is you can immediately cut out all of the pauses directly from the text and you can see down here, that big pause there, if I hit delete here, it will remove it. Because while we'll put up with pauses in everyday speech, when you're looking at videos, and also there's double words here, so we can remove that one, and another pause. So that just makes it so much easier to listen to. And then you can go through all of this text and read through it and think, actually, no, we don't need that bit. And you can either delete say sections of it and you might only want half a sentence of what they've said so because they've said it earlier so you can also just highlight an entire sentence and then hit delete and it will take all of the highlighted text away and it will cut it out of the footage that's the key part but if there's a whole block you don't need then you can just click on the little dustbin at the side and that will remove that entire block so this saves you a heck of a lot of time. And also when you know they said something within all of that waffle that's really important, you can quickly read through it all without having to listen to it. And that really is a tremendous time saver. Now on the paid version, it will take out all the ums and ahs and pauses and double speech for you. So you could, it is, if you're doing a lot of this, it is worthwhile investing in that paid version. Also, you can create captions for your video as well, which is very good for social media trailers. So you can do all whizzy things like removing the background and changing it, or you can pop yourself, as literally as a talking head, into the council meeting, should you so wish. 
Now I've played with these but I haven't actually had time yet to incorporate it into any of the formal videos but frankly you're lucky if you get a change of jumper on this channel let alone a change of background but it's on my list of things to do as is incorporating some of the AI characters that are within the software. Hey, good to see you, counselors. Gosh, you are looking gorgeous today, so slim and fit. Have you all been cycling around Colchester? You must have ridden your bikes until your wheels fell off. I, I can hear Andrew Whiffs, Weavers, whispering very rat loud me in my ear in uh, agreement. We just as well, I haven't had the time to incorporate that software into my videos because there's all sorts of things that you can do with it you probably really shouldn't do. Put it this way, there's a much naughtier version of the AI clip that is never going to see the light of day. So if, for example, you don't want to do the to camera stuff, you can just write the script and AI can do it for you. Or you could even do a double act and have it like a ventriloquist dummy. So it says the things that perhaps you shouldn't, or perhaps it shouldn't. Anyway, there's lots you can do with this software far more than I have time to play with, but it's very powerful and it's free. Um, there is a paid for version, but you know, you can do the vast majority of things you need to do on the free version and it will save you a lot of time with the transcript editing. I'm going to make this a cap cut tutorial because there are loads of them online that go into lots of details, but basically you go into elements and pick your AI character. Unfortunately, most of them look about 10 years old, but there is a few a couple of older ones, Mia particularly, so you just click on that and it will insert her into the bit here and then you can go into elements and put a background in behind her. So basically whatever comes on top is the thing you're going to see the most, so you need to swap. She needs to be above the background, so if we pop her up here, whoops, pop the background back down here. The online one's a bit clunky, it's better if you do it on your computer. Come on, there we go. So there's her background, and then you can just adjust that by dragging it, Oop. and that'll do. And then you click onto her, and then you'll get the AI character, and then you can choose whether you want her half-bodied, or full-bodied, or close-up, etc. And then you just type what you want in here. Actually, let's just leave that. Hey, good to see you. As I say, it's very clunky because my internet's so slow, but um, when you do this on your computer or other device, uh, it works out a lot better. And there's loads of things with this. You can drop photos in next to her video clips. Um, you may have seen the trailer that we did. It's not clear if the police were called this time, but the women were seen fleeing the town hall around 7 o'clock. A spokesperson advised the public to be cautious if they see the women and not to approach them as they might bite. As so do send me links to the videos you make and I'll hopefully get some on the channel. So until next time, take care.